please welcome from Alberta, Canada, Steve Obergaard. Well, good evening or morning or whatever we're at. <laughs> My name is Steve Obergaard. I live in Alberta, Canada. I love Canada. I'm going to say that right now. But without you guys, Canada would be screwed. A hundred percent. Okay. I'm an outfitter and I live mostly in the bush. My good friend Dan Schneider got me to come and speak on behalf of Canadian healthcare. I have first-hand experience of all the healthcare. I live in a small rural town of 3,000 people, but I'll tell you what, my, my personal experiences with our socialist healthcare is astonishing. Our healthcare system, I hate to say this in a redneck way, it totally sucks. <laughs> For me, personally, I had 40% blockage of my heart. I was in trouble. I felt sluggish. I was in, on, did a whole bunch of medicine. I couldn't feel good. I didn't do anything good in life. My good friend from Ohio got me to go to the Cleveland Clinic because he said I look like a balloon. He, he helped me a lot. I went to Cleveland, and I didn't have a blockage. The Cleveland doctor said to me, get off the medicine, quit the, all the medicine you're on, and get on the treadmill. Well, as you can see, that didn't really look, work. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I used to look like Steven Seagal. Now, now I'm kind of like, I, I don't know what I am, okay? So anyways, after I went there, went off all my medication, I felt good again. My life was, was full. I'm happy. I'm raising all my kids. I'm so, so happy. And that is because of your health care. Your doctors, not my socialist care, okay? The next story I'm going to tell you about. My, <clears throat> this is very personal. My, um, my buddy, Dwight, okay, a big man, he, bigger than I am. <clears throat> he had um, a broken ankle, okay. He broke his ankle, and he needed a pin put into it. Because of our health system, he had to go to bed for 18 months and he had so much sores, you know, bed sores, he had so many bed sores he could hardly even move. He stayed there for 18 months. He got gangrene in his leg. So he was in a, in a total bind. I knew this guy, he loved the outdoors, he loved the mountains, he loved everything about Canada. After he got gangrene. The healthcare system told him, oh, it's another two years. You're going to have to slay, go in bed for two more years. Guess what? He cut his leg off. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> my daughter um, was at a car crash and um, had whiplash, okay? A few months later, she, she could not, she was very bright, she could not function, she couldn't do the computer, she could not run her family home, okay? She had so much wrong with her, the doctor said it was anxiety, it was stress. They didn't say, to her there was something wrong. My good friend again from Ohio said, please come down to Cleveland. They brought 
Jessica down to Cleveland and found out within two days that she was diagnosed with POTS disease, POTS disease, okay? So that means all she had to do was function good and go on to her new life. From then on, she goes down every six months to Cleveland. Now you gotta remember, this is all on our dime. We don't have any kind of um, money or anything except fundraising, private fundraising. After that, she feels way better and she flies down, like I said, every six weeks. She is so better, she is raised in her family, she's feeling good because of that one friend of mine telling her to go to Ohio and telling her to try you American healthcare. Trust me, don't, don't go anywhere, okay? Okay, finally, our babysitter, Dina was diagnosed with stage one breast cancer. Um, <clears throat> because of the Canadian protocol that takes so long, the PET scans, they basically told her she was class one to start with. Because it waited so long, she was diagnosed with class four, okay? So that was unbelievable. In a few months, because they didn't have no way of treating it, diagnosing it, she went from a class one to a class four. Basically, they told her to uh, put her affairs in order. She had a small family, basically lay down and die. That's what they told her. Thank God that, <clears throat> um, our, we had a fundraising, a private fundraising for her. We, her family was in the oil field, was well enough to go to Arizona. They got the diagnosis in Arizona and went to Vancouver, British Columbia, for the medicine. She travels to Vancouver to take the medicine, and it cost her $2,000 out of her pocket because, of course, no insurance and stuff. But... Unbelievable, she is 100% cancer-free. So they told me I can't, uh, I'm a big BSer, okay? They told me I have to kind of shut this down a little bit. And, and so if you want to talk later, trust me, she's giddy up time, I'll tell you everything, okay? So with, so I'll end like this. So with social medicine, you will experience the same things that I did. Don't listen to those yahoos. The other guys, I'm sorry, the other guys, you know who I mean. I don't know, I'm not a big political correct guy, but you know they're no good for nothing. So... Uh, <laughs> So this is why I'm going to end it up. Thank you so much again. And America, remember, without you guys, Canada would be screwed. OK? <laughs>